Hi, good afternoon. My name is CB. I'm the product manager at Big Data Exchange. Today I'll be talking about Falcoin Data Marketplace and how the unique structure of uh, Fail Plus uh, allow us to create this opportunity. So um, let's start with the mission first. So we want to advance Falcoin's mission of creating a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humans' foundation. Uh, essentially, what we are trying to do is we want to mesh storage providers, uh, allow them to come onto our ex uh, platform to bid on valuable data from clients. And when we, do, when we do this, we achieve two things, right? Number one, we provide storage providers with a steady, persistent pipeline of Fall Plus deal. And number two, we increase clients' awareness and adoption of decentralized data storage. Um, and we are able to do this because of the unique crypto icon of Fail Plus, which did mention earlier. Uh, for those who are not aware, uh, Fail Plus is designed to maximize uh, data storage usage. Uh, it is uh, done via a layer of social trust, and that trust uh, is distributed by the allocation of data cap in this chart. So clients, uh, notaries will uh, allocate data cap to clients, and in turn, clients got to show the notary, what kind of data it is, where it's being stored, and when they engage storage providers to do this, uh, to do this uh, storage, they will deploy data cap. And when storage provider has this data cap, they receive a 10x boost to their quality adjusted power. So they're essentially doing the same thing, but they're getting a 10 times uh, more power. So this is an example here, right? A 10, pip, a 10 tip uh, file plus deal will equate to, no, 50. 50 Tip file plus deal will equate to 500 pip, uh, 500 tip of storage power. So that's very powerful, and it creates additional incentives, right? Um, so now the real question is, how do we allocate these additional incentives? Do we do it on the left, which is like a, or on the right, which is the trickle down economics, or do we let the market decide? Now this is very con contentious, right? Because every SP has different costs, different uh, incentives, different structures, uh, and we think that the free market theory. Uh, it's the best way to sort out these kind of issues through the price action and through demand and supply. Um, so we think, let the market decide how to allocate this additional nine times of uh, quality adjusted power. Uh, and I want to address the elephant in the room here. It seems like uh, we are distributing, it seems like SP is passing some of their rewards to clients, uh, and that's not really the case here. Why, you may ask? Because 16 is always going to be better, uh, bigger than 10. Uh, perhaps you can do the deal twice as fast, or perhaps you can do two deals instead of one. Um, and of course, there are a lot of assumptions here, right? You know, is there storage capacity available? Maybe there are a lot of costs, but the main point here is, you know, let the market decide. It may not be a zero-sum game. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So now that we determine that value, valuable data has, that, has value, and uh, we don't know how much this value is, but what we do know is that when SP take on this field plus deal, they will be allocated additional uh, 40, 40, 40 fail right now per year over uh, for one tip. So while we do not know what the value is, we do know that maybe they will bid between 10, 0 and 40. So this essentially uh, opens the floodgate to, to decide that you know, valuable data does have value, right? Uh, and we allow the market to, to do this through a very fair, transparent, uh, efficient price discovery process. And when this happens, this is where it gets more interesting, right? The pie is going to get bigger. Using the island analogy, um, when, when there's value, people start coming into the island. And this is where, which I mentioned earlier, it's not a zero-sum game. This is where I'm excited about. Right now, when you want to do a deal, it's very, um, there's a lot of technical difficulty. There's a lot of constraints, bandwidth limitations. Uh, once, you, once there's value, people will allocate resources into this. And this is where you get, are able to mobilize resources, uh, build bigger teams, uh, employ more capital. Um, and this is all very beneficial for everyone in the, in the network. That's why I really want to emphasize that this is not a zero-sum game. So now we settle the value that, uh, settle the reason why clients will come to our platform, right? What about SP? Um, by now, we should determine that SP are incentivized to do fail plus deals. And there are usually two ways of getting the deals. Uh, the first one is you build a business development team, right? You go out there and you solve the deals. Uh, this is expensive and it is inefficient. Sometimes the deals get to, uh, the leads get to nowhere. Second one is uh, be, the, be the clients. And that's essentially self-dealing. And if history has taught us anything, is that it's unsustainable, uh, it's opaque. You may not even be able to get a data cap allocation. 
So this is where we think we can come in and fill the, fulfill the needs of SPs to give them a persistent supply of fuel plus deal so that they can do what they do best, which is you know, focus on uh, providing data storage or retrieval uh, services. So a lot of people ask, oh, wh why are SP willing to pay? You know, they are providing a very valuable service. They are paying for their equipment. Uh, they should be the one collecting payment instead. And in normal times, I agree that would be the case. But uh, today is an extraordinary time. We have this fuel plus incentive structure that changes the whole dynamic of it. Um, that's why uh, maybe they are not really paying. Maybe there's marginal benefits uh, because of the improved service economics. For example, right, we've got to we got to understand that you know they pay investments for all this ceiling and storage hardware, and for anyone who's familiar with technological hardware, uh, you want to efficiently use them fast before depreciation catches on, and a steady stream of fuel plus deal uh, enables you to do that. Um, you know earlier I mentioned about BD team, right? Now you don't have to build a BD team. You can always sort of get fuel plus deal on demand if you want it, if you're willing to pay the right price. So that's also another implied benefit. Um, for on, on our exchange, right, what we are trying to do is we want to make sure the deal making is very smooth and very efficient. Earlier I mentioned uh, 2 times 8 is bigger than 10 because now you're dealing with clients who are very proficient in this process. Uh, even if they are not, just now we mentioned that there's mobilization of resources, mobilization of teams. Maybe this will make the whole process even faster. So this is going to be, uh, you're going to save time. When you save time, you have more time to earn rewards. Um, and then, of course, other stuff like better reputation and marketing services, uh, marketing results in the Web3 data service. So these are all very, um, these are all benefits which could potentially outweigh the cost. We don't know. That's why we say, hey, let's go and experiment. Let the market decide. Uh, it could turn out to be the case. So this is the part where it gets even more interesting because once you have a few successful deals, right, uh, SP will see that, hey, oh, it's easy to get a few plus deals there, so I'm going to come here and bid. And then when clients see the SP bid aggressively, what do they do? They will come on board as well. And this is where liquidity begets liquidity. And this is where we can really do more interesting stuff. Uh, this is where, uh, you know, when the mobilization of teams come in and make it smoother, it, it creates a faster throughput, a higher cycle. Uh, and this is what we're trying to achieve, right? And uh, so we can be the platform that matches petabyte data, uh, level of data with SPs. And in so doing, we're going to get more attention, more adoption. Um, and then when there's exciting price action in the auction, we're going to tweet this out. This is going to generate hype awareness. Um, so like I said earlier, you know, the pie is going to get bigger, and it's really not a zero-sum game. And then this is the part where it's, it's even more exciting. This is where we can explore even more stuff. Once we get all these deals happening on that platform, right, uh, we can become a repository of valuable data and where these data are stored. And then when, when we do that, there are a lot of things we can do. For example, number one, we can assist clients with data cap allocation uh, because right now it is not earlier deep say is, you know it's still not a very smooth process so this is something that we can do and help the clients uh, this is how we can bring people who are not familiar with Filecoin into the system and then number two is you know as SP do more deals online uh, on, our, on our platform we have reputation metrics when you have reputation metrics you are able to ascertain uh, what kind of SP this is and then when you do that you can do a lot of uh, other ancillary services. For example, we can be the linkage between financial providers and SP, provide financing. And you know, financing can be a very good thing if you manage it very well, and you can scale your business very fast. Um, and then number three, you could build a marketplace for data retrieval services, uh, compute over data, and more Web3 data services. And since we already determined that data has value, uh, we can even you know, create data asset tokens. So these are the things we can explore. So this is the MVP we've launched two weeks ago. Uh, this is a very uh, simple landing page where it shows the most time-sensitive auction. Uh, as a client or as a storage provider, all you need is a few clicks uh, to, to get a deal done. Uh, the one on uh, the right is for the client, and the one on the left is for, for SP. You get to see the, the deal size, how many copies there are, uh, what is the highest bidding price. Um, so yeah, this is what we've achieved in these two weeks. I'm going to take a brief moment to explain what, what this is. So, so we currently have 1.5 uh, pip of deal that's being listed on our platform already. And out of this uh, 1.5 pip, right, around 33% of it is, has already been transacted. So this is a validation of our hypothesis that there is a demand for, uh, to pay for data. 
Um, and then, of course, we have, uh, for anyone who's bidding, the fields are locked. And then the total transacted fill are 450 fill. So this is what has happened in the past two weeks. We're very proud of what we have achieved. And I think uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to stop there. We're going to do more. And this is the roadmap for, from now to the end of the year. We're going to have like full functionality. Uh, we're going to have like top-notch UX experience. And hopefully, uh, by the end of the year, we'll have 100 pip of uh, data on our platform.